<laughs> I know. Saturday, Comic Con. Oh my God. So, just so you know how much I want to do this panel, I left the Nerdist panel. I was across the way, and I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, I gotta go. Uh, and then there was a minute where they were like, oh, and I was like, if Quentin Tarantino lets you do anything you do, just shut up. And they were like, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, I'm very excited to uh, present to you today the Hateful Eight panel. Um, you're gonna see a lot of stuff that never one, that no one's seen before, and it's actually a very juicy amount of footage. And you're gonna see people that you want to see. Uh, so I'm gonna shut up so we can get into this. And we're gonna leave plenty of time for audience questions. So this is gonna be very, very, very fan-driven panel. Um, so without uh, further ado, I would like to introduce the 70 millimeter trailer of Hateful Eight. 70. I would like to bring out the man that you uh, just saw up there talking about it. Please welcome Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino, please take Let's bring out a lot of the people that you saw just a second ago. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Kurt Russell. Also, Jennifer Jason Lee. Walton Goggins. Demian Bashir. Mr. Tim Roth! Michael Madsen! And Mr. Bruce Stern! Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, good to be here. That's good. Fantastic. Welcome. Hey, Kurt Russell. Hello. How's it going? Good. Uh, sick mustache. Really rad. Always <laughs> on point. Um, so, how did you how did you get involved, basically? Did Quentin just call you and say, I want to do a thing, and you said, well, I'll do whatever you want, or did you, how did, how did it come to pass? Uh, it was last year, yeah. and uh, Quentin called, and he said, I'm going to do a reading of this, uh, this script, which, you, you know, you want to take part of it, and I said, sure, that'd be great. And uh, you wanted to rehearse it. So a couple of days in the rehearsal, I found out that we were going to actually be doing it in front of a crowd about this size here. <laughs> we rehearsed it, and, uh, and then after we did it, it was, uh, it was quite a fun experience, and it, it played really well, and Quentin decided he wanted to make the movie, and I was just thrilled to be uh, having the opportunity to be a part of it. How is it different working with, I mean, if it feels like, I'm assuming from an outsider's perspective, it's probably a unique experience working with him. Well, I could get myself into a lot of trouble here. <laughs> uh, there's nobody like this guy. Yeah. He's in a league of his own, and... Uh, I think all you guys know that. <laughs> I think he's just uh, oh, he's trying to, yeah. <laughs> It's going to be hard to sit next to that. We could go on and on and on, but I, I, it's honestly uh, true that every couple of generations or so, somebody comes along who does it not only differently, but does it his or her way in such a way that uh, it's inimitable. When you see five frames of anything he does, you, you know who's doing it. And um, I, I really mean this sincerely, and I think all the, all the great actors that are sitting here um, would, would agree. Um, I, I would wish this for every actor, actress, that they have the opportunity to work with Quentin once. It's a, it's a fantastic experience, not just in terms of what he does, but it's really more how he does it. It's a circus that you want to be a part of. Well, uh, we have about 20 minutes, so I want to make sure that we get as many fan questions as possible so that you guys can, can drive this and have all your questions answered. So let's uh, shine the light. Light! Well, oh, hello. Hey! Amazing. I like your tailor, young lady. <laughs> Hi. What's your name? My name's Alyssa Camacho. Well, hello. What is your question? My question is for Mr. Tarantino. And it is if you are going to use the same style of anime from Kill Bill Volume 1, into the Hateful Eight somehow? Uh, no, there's not a, an anime sequence in uh, the Hateful Eight. Uh, where were you when I needed you? That's probably a pretty good idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, thinking about some of the flashbacks could have been really good uh, in Japanese anime. That would be cool. Uh, no, we're not doing it on this one, but I'm uh, very uh, flattered and gratified that you're such a fan of that. 
<laughs> and uh, you look amazing. <laughs> she just cartwheels out. Uh, hey, what is your name? I'm, I'm Joey, by the way, she's probably the coolest parents in the world. Um, <laughs> yeah. My, I wanted to ask... Or they're dead, we don't know, we don't know. <laughs> Maybe she... We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> my question was for Quentin, um, as, yeah, as was reported, the original script for this was leaked online, and until I uh, heard that you, by the way, until I heard that you were re rewriting it totally, then I read it, and it was great. Um, my question was, did the, um, did it, the fact that you had already had a story for this make it difficult to do a total rewrite? And also, second question, sorry about that, uh, will we be seeing The Bride again, perhaps in volume three? Uh, yeah, uh, so the thing about it was, uh, what, what pissed me off about what happened with the leak was the fact that normally I kind of finish a, a script and once I'm done with it, I'm ready to go into production. But this was one I kind of wanted to go through three drafts. I wanted to get there. I didn't want to like have to, uh, you know, like there's certain plot threads that were in the first draft that I, I wasn't quite ready to, to tie up yet, but I knew I had a couple of the drafts to go. So, uh, so that's why I was a little disconcerted when it, when it got out there. Having said that, though, you know, the, my process was my process. So even though I, I yelled and screamed about it, I kind of kept on doing what I planned to do. So, it, it, you know, the, the second draft and the third draft is what I ended up shooting and uh, was where I was going anyway with it. So that kind of just went on the way it would. It just got more public than I wanted it to get. That's and um, uh, we'll see. I never say never. We'll see. All right. You know, uh, uh, when it comes to Kill Bill Three, uh, Uma would really like to do it. We we talk about it every once in a while or so. All right. Uh, we've got we've got to wait for Bernita's daughter to get old enough to go and kill her. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll see. <laughs> I have a question. Just as we're sort of weaving this in for Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, is there anything that you can sort of tell us about the essence of who your character is? Because obviously we got some glimpses. Without giving too much away, what can you say? Um, well, she's being taken to be hanged by this man. And um, she's doing everything she can to survive. She's a bit feral. Um, <laughs> but, uh, crazy like a fox, I would say. She's, yeah. pretty, she's pretty smart. Excellent. And I was very excited to see uh, Walton Goggins and I uh, were in House of a Thousand Corpses together. And you are in a Quentin Tarantino movie now, and I'm very excited and proud for you. Just, I said, I'm just excited that just seeing where we all kind of started out, and now you're way huge. I mean, like, how did, what was it like for you coming onto the set with all this, this pantheon of actors? I mean, yeah, look around. You know, really, it was, uh, it was extraordinary. There's one, one scene in particular, I mean, I can't really go into too much, but there was an opportunity to kind of interface with almost everyone up here. And uh, and, and and it was at, at one point during the rehearsal period with Quentin, I just stopped. And, and you're just kind of a field with this emotion because it's like you, you hope that you can hang on long enough to put yourself in a situation where uh, a filmmaker like Quentin, you know, gives you a shot. And, uh, and then you look around at all of this talent. And I remember where I was when I first saw every single actor up here. And uh, it's just, it's been an extraordinary run, man. It's, it's really a special, special experience. You're a very special boy, Walton Goggins. Oh, I'm a special very boy. Special boy. Uh, what is your name, sir? Hi, my name's Sam. My What's question's for Quentin Tarantino. Um, I was just wondering, since you just made Django Unchained and you're making Hateful Eight, are you a Western director now? Can we expect more Westerns in the future? <laughs> yeah, I actually, yeah, uh, I actually feel that when it comes to Westerns, uh, maybe not in the old days when people made Twenty westerns or twenty-five westerns, as well as doing other things. Uh, but I think, at least nowadays, you have to make at least three westerns to call yourself a western director, <laughs> and or anything else, you're just dabbling in the genre. And so, uh, uh, I, I will eventually make three westerns, so I can officially call myself a western director. And <laughs> Yeah. on the table with all the other Western directors, and then we'll just see how they stand. <laughs> Excellent. Good question. Uh, I'd love to hear from uh, Demian, too. Uh, just anything about your experience on the film, and uh, just the, the, the elements of it, and it just seemed very claustrophobic in parts of it, so what was it like? Well, for you? yeah, it was, it was all that. Uh, you know, when you become an actor, this is what you want. You want to work with uh, the best directors and, uh, and fantastic cast, and uh, so for me, I mean, I've been a big fan of all these guys for many years. And uh, I can only say that I had the best seat on the house. <laughs> Watching all these guys in action, that, that was my gift. 
Yeah. You know, I just want to say one thing about Damien. You know, it's really interesting because uh, uh, when I, in the very first draft of the script, uh, Bob was a Frenchman. All right, and then I decided in the second draft to change him to a Mexican, and then but I couldn't think of anybody immediately. Nobody came to my mind immediately to play the character, and so actually I called up my buddy Robert Rodriguez, and I go, okay, so like I'm writing this Mexican character and everything. Who would you recommend from the different Mexican actors you, you know? Would you recommend somebody in particular? He hadn't read the script or anything, and he goes, uh, oh, quick, Damien Bashir. Damien Bashir, that's who it is. We did Machete Kills together, and you were fantastic in Machete Kills. He goes, we did Machete Kills together, and through the whole movie, I kept saying, you're a Quentin actor. Quentin's got to work with you. You are a Quentin actor, all right? And so he just said, it's Damien. Just don't, don't talk about it, just hire him. <laughs> I love you, Robert. <laughs> hey, what is your name? My name is Jose. Um, Quentin, you just answered my question because I'm also Mexican. Damian, you're a chingón, te adoro, soy un fan. My question is, oh yeah, why did you cast Damian? Uh, I mean, you can also cast, uh, you said, a French and also a German. Why you didn't cast Christoph Waltz? It's your favorite, I, I think. But um, <laughs> why, did, why, did you, why do you like, uh, what? Do you like about the man? Thank you. Oh well, the thing about well, the thing about it was uh, well, Damien's just an amazing actor, and actually, to tell you the truth, it's like of all the characters, if you look at what's on the page and then you see what Damien delivered with it, it's like the one like, how the fuck did he get there from here? <laughs> I mean, what's on the page doesn't really reflect what he ended up doing. Am, am I wrong about that? No, it doesn't reflect it at all. All right, he's like the page. Fuck the page. He just moved on, <laughs> did his own thing, and we're all the better for it. Uh, uh, You're talking about a true chameleon here. We worked together for four months, all all of us, right? When we got on the plane from Los Angeles to come down here. None of us recognized Damien. <laughs> we didn't know who he was. So he's playing. I thought it was Jennifer's security. <laughs> he's playing for Nobody knew who he was. Uh, right. Tim Roth, was the same was the same experience for you in sort of developing the, this guy? Like how did you get how did you arrive at this particular character? I just did what he told me to do. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty much what you have to do. I mean it, 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 there are very few directors where the writer directors where you read it and it, and you, and it's done. You, it's very, very clear. Um, from what's on the page, what you need to do, and, it, and you, there isn't really an improvisation necessary. It's, it's incredible experience. So, I just it, my, the main concern really was: Am I doing it too much here? Is it too, oh, too over the top? I'm kind of no, no. Give me more. <laughs> yeah, Tim, Tim's performance is a little bit a uh, 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 gallery of great British character actors from the past. All right, uh, give me a little Terry Thomas on this one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so when you so when you and Michael Madsen and you guys get together, is it does it feel does it feel new or does it feel like oh this is just this is where we just we just left off here we just we just picked up where we left off before? I think we uh, picked up where we left off, but I I think it went one step farther. I think we are even better. We're smarter, a little bit older, but uh, still under control. The best director on the planet. Excellent. Hello, sir. What is your name? Uh, my name is Drew. And what's your question? Uh, Drew? Stop. First off, I love you. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Drew. Oh, Thanks. that was for him. <laughs> Fine. Uh, I just wanted to ask, recently in an interview, you said that you were probably your, your most likely you could stop after 10 films. And I wanted to know how much validity there was to that. And if so, why? <laughs> Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. I mean, that was more, that wasn't so much a mission statement, more that me trying to have a serious discussion of an artist's vitality in public in a world where that's not really a good thing to do. Right? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, in a world before it was all broken down into like uh, 133 articles where the paragraphs were taken out of context. All right. Um, but there is an aspect of, you know, I do kind of like the idea of ten and done. There is kind of a there is a kind of neat thing about that. I do like that. We'll see what happens. But you have to keep in mind, though, um, 
If I go by the, my normal route of the last 20 years, I usually make about three movies a decade. So this is like number two for this decade. So even if I were to end at 10, that's still like another decade and a little bit more to finish that up. However, if things change as far as like, you know, if I can't shoot on film, if I can't release to some degree or another on film, I don't know if I'll, I'll even make 10. However, the thing, we'll see what happens, all right? And I might just say, the hell with that and make 15, who knows? But, I'm, uh, 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 but I do like the idea of getting out, leaving you a little bit, leaving you wanting a little bit more. Sure. I, I like the idea of getting out while it's like, I'm, well, it's still good. I don't want to be out of touch. And, you know, and if everything changes, well, then I guess I am out of touch, and it's time for me to step aside and let other people take the road. Um, on the other hand, though, part of the thing I don't like about digital projection and all that, to me, it's just HBO in public. You're just watching television in public. So if that becomes what movies become, then I can move to television. All right, you know, then I'll cut off the metal man. And then, you know, it's like, so maybe there's 10 movies and maybe I have three miniseries in my future. Where then I can like just write my stories and they're as long as they are and I just shoot it all and then the, the, these little novels for television and that's all good. Yeah, you know? that's good. People seem happy with that. Too long to get in the whole, except for Kill Bill, all my scripts get cut down anyway. So if I could actually just write a story and it ends up being eight hours and all good, <laughs> all good. Or it just goes on forever. Yeah. <laughs> in five years, you'll have to shoot it on Snapchat. Like, there won't even be, yeah. be any movies exactly. anymore. I'm like, it's an emoji movie. Uh, <laughs> what is your name, sir? Hey, how you doing? Hey. Uh, Martin, how's it going? Hey, Martin. This is kind of a daunting panel of coolness, so it's. <laughs> a little trouble here. Uh, so I'll direct this to Kurt Russell. Um, you've played some fairly recognizable characters over the years. Uh, Snake, Wyatt Earp, uh, Jack, you know, people that maybe recognize. How'd, how'd you pull those particular characters in to give some spirit to the character that you play in this movie that's coming up? You're actually very insightful into how I go about my work. <laughs> um, I think one of the fun things you can do as an actor, and I kind of figured it out when I was, for me anyway, when I was 27 or 20, 27 years old, had the opportunity to play Elvis Presley. Nobody else really wanted to do it. I figured, well, <clears throat> fuck it, if I'm gonna do this, I'll go down in flames. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good one to go down with. And it uh, didn't turn out that way. And for, for the first time, I got to do something really the way I wanted to do it. And I got to do it with a man named John Carpenter, who we then went on to make fun of. And he gave me the opportunity to do things you know, kind of the way we both saw them and the way I wanted to do them. And I always wanted to try to have the chance to create people that I, were, to me, you know, hopefully something that people could watch and go, that's a little different. <laughs> guy's, guy's a little different than I, than I, but I know somebody kind of like that. So I have this tendency to take people from my real life or people from movie business, take little pieces of them. There's six very specific people who are genres. They are, they are, they are my, my guiding way to find John Ruth, and it all comes from what he wrote and discussions with Quentin. This is an interesting, this one was an interesting one. I didn't, I didn't get this right away. I didn't, I, yeah, I was struggling a little bit. And Quentin was helping me kind of try to find a way. Whatever it is is what it's going to be, but that's a really insightful question for, for me. Thank you very much. Oh, well done. Um, Mr. Bruce Dern, love to hear from you for a sec. Bruce, how do you fit into all of this? How do you fit into the story? Who is this guy? Well, Bueller. Uh, I fit into the story, I think, because the kid grew up watching me be a jerk on television. <laughs> uh, and uh, there, there's like uh, a couple of things I'll say, even though it's not directly an answer to your question. Uh, the excitement for all of us was just to be asked by this man to be in his movie. That's number one. Number two, he has, Quentin, has the greatest attention to detail on a set, making a scene, as any director who ever lived. If he had a rival, it would only be Lucino Visconti. Secondly, he creates an atmosphere for all of us, not to do our greatest work necessarily, but to get better. And he does that for everybody on the set, not just the actors, 
but everybody else. And I was excited to come to work every single day with this man because I thought we just might have a chance to do something that's never been done. That's Quentin Tarantino. That is, uh, that's a, that's a climactic, beautiful. We have time for one more question. No? Oh, she, it, come on. How can you do that to her? Oh, come on. Don't be evil. Let this poor girl ask her question, <laughs> or I won't really be able to do anything about it. Otherwise, I guess. Turn your mic on. Oh. <laughs> okay. What, what, what you say? We'll, we'll, we'll repeat it back. You can have my mic. Her name is Natalie. Oh, Stop. If you're, oh, okay, yeah. there we go. Oh, thank you, Good. Thank you. No, yeah, go, go, go. We, we forced them into submission. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to say, Quentin, you're so awesome. My entire family loves you. Oh, thanks, Robert. And, and my question is, what is your favorite thing you've ever said or written in a movie? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, wow, that is a good one, actually. Good last question. Yeah. Good last question. Gosh, uh, uh, God, that's actually such a good question. I don't really know if I have a, uh, an answer for it, especially with this press for time bill shit. All right, uh, 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 you know, uh, gosh darn. Um, you know, I, I can't think right, right now, I can't think of anything as far as a writer is concerned, all right, that I've written that was like my number one favorite. No, I take that back. All right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my favorite thing I think I've ever written is uh, 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 th the scene in the uh, French farmhouse at the beginning of *Inglorious Bastards*. Before that, it was in my very first script, *True Romance*. It was the whole Sicilian speech, and I always knew that that was the one to beat. And then when I finally wrote that scene in *Inglorious Bastards*, like, oh, I think I finally beat that one. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you guys. Uh, hey, you know, I'm gonna to you guys that people don't know yet, so I'm going to announce it out here now, is it wasn't for sure, and we just kind of settled it down. You guys know that I normally don't use uh, uh, an original score in my movies. I kind of take scores from other movies and put them in there, and this one I kind of thought, maybe this should have an original score. And so I'm here to announce that the great Eno Morricone Whoa. will not only be doing an original score for The Hateful Eight that he's writing right now. We'll be, uh, we'll be uh, recording in Prague in the next couple of weeks. But that will be his first Western score in 40 years. Fantastic. Hateful Eight comes out December 25th of this year, Christmas Day. Please a huge hand for Quentin Tarantino and the cast of Hateful Eight. See you.